Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for today's video, we're going to be discussing the Archimede Outdoor 41mm Anti-Magnetic Sports Watch. And yeah, that does seem like a lot of qualifiers, but I do think that this is a timely video given the increase in popularity of sports watches with that integrated looking bracelet design. And when you factor in the amount of tech that's in this watch, as well as the price point, I do think that if you're in the market for a do everything grab and go watch, this is one of the best ones you can pick up for that $1,000 price point. Now, just to give you guys some background of how I came to acquire this watch for the review, about this time last year, I did have the opportunity to pick up the 39 millimeter Archimede Pilot Watch from a Canadian watch enthusiast. And that watch quickly became one of my favorite fleegers in the collection. And this led me down the path to look at some of the other watches available in the Archimede catalog. So I did reach out to the brand directly and they kindly lent in this Archimede Outdoor watch for the review. And once this video concludes, I will be shipping it back to them. But why don't we flip the camera around now and you guys can actually check out this Archimede sports watch up close in the studio. So here we do have the Archimede Outdoor in the studio, but before giving you some of the specs for this timepiece, I do want to quickly cover some of the heritage behind this brand. So Archimede, as it is trademarked and as we know it, has only been around for about the past 20 years, but its founder, Carl Eichler, has worked in the watch case manufacturing industry since the late 1920s. And in fact, manufacturing in the Eichler facility really ramped up around World War II. And essentially what this means is that if you purchase a watch from this brand, rest assured that the design and the manufacturing for the watch case has been done in-house in Germany. And Eichler also does some other nice added touches, like they thermally blew their own hands, which is extremely well executed on the dial for this watch. Now in terms of the case dimensions, this is a 41 millimeter case diameter here. If I flip the watch to the side, the lug to lug, so that's the effective wingspan between my thumbs here, comes in at 46.5 millimeters. And you can see that the lugs themselves are hooded on the top, which does give the appearance of an integrated bracelet design. Although if I flip the watch over to the case back, you can see the end links for the supplied bracelet are actually straight and they're an even 20 millimeters, which is nice because that means if you want to swap out the bracelet for a strap, it will take 20 millimeter straps and even some NATOs. Although if you want to use a NATO strap, you might want to consider using bent spring bars so the fabric can easily pass through the hooded part of the lugs over the case back here. If we roll back to the watch head, the thickness is only 11 millimeters, which I found quite impressive given the fact that this watch is afforded 200 meters of water resistance. The uh, sapphire crystal is completely flat and it does carry multiple layers of anti-reflective treatment on the underside. And the dial itself is extremely legible because it's a matte black dial and all of the remaining printing is done with high contrast white paint. And I really enjoy the overall layout for the dial. You can see at the periphery, there's a raised chapter ring that does have your running minutes track, which every five minute interval is marked with fine Arabic printing. Below that, you have nice square batons printing at each hour index with a double baton at the 12 o'clock position. Below that, you have bold Arabic numerals for each hour, except for at the three o'clock position, which is cut out and you have a nice date aperture that's there. Just above a six o'clock hour marker, it does say that this is the outdoor model, water resistance to 20 atmospheres or 200 meters, and it is anti-magnetic which means that Eichler put a soft iron Faraday cage around the uh, movement of this watch. And this watch is anti-magnetic down to 1000 Gauss, which is the same spec as a Rolex mill Gauss, in case you were wondering. As I did mention, the seconds hand is thermally blued and it's very nicely brushed as well. 
and the hour markers as well as the handset are loomed up very well with BGW9 Swiss Super Luminova, which does give you that nice blue glow, which I would say is not as intense as some of the other Swiss Super Luminova formulations, but it does last quite a long time. And getting orientation in no lighting situations is quite easy to do because they didn't just loom up the baton markers for each hour index, but the bold Arabics as well. Now this watch does run a Swiss automatic movement, I wasn't 100% sure if it's an ETA 2824 or it's an SW200. I suspect it's the latter. Either way, you're getting a workhorse Swiss manufactured movement with 26 joules, about a 40 hour power reserve. It does have hacking in hand wind and ticks away at four Hertz, giving you that nice sweep to the seconds hand. To operate the movement, you have this really nice oversized and signed Archimede crown I measure the crown to be about seven millimeters and it does have these partial crown guards here, but it's knurled very well. So even unscrewing it with gloved hands is quite easy to do. You get a very satisfying pop. And then if you pull it out in the intermediate position, you can quickly cycle through the date of the month. And then if you pull the crown to extremity, you can see I stopped the seconds hand by hacking the balance. And then you can set to any reference time that you want. Now in terms of case finishes, it's purely brushed or bead blasted. And because Eichler does do this in-house, the level of brushing is done to a very, very high detail. And the brushing continues when you get to the three link style bracelet. Even though the end link for itself is nestled underneath the lugs here, you can see that the first link actually does flare out. So it's actually 23 millimeters at the very first link here. And you can see it follows the form of the hooded lug. And then you do get a nice taper down to about 18 millimeters before you get to the Archimedes signed clasp. The clasp itself has six layers of micro adjustment anchoring points. So getting a good fit for this watch should be quite easy. You can see that there's a fold over releasing mechanism here. And then you have twin trigger action to open up the milled portion of the swing arm here. I do have to mention that for the hardened bracelet, um, closing this clasp and the fold over mechanism yeah, does take a little bit more force than I'm used to. And I did notify our committee about this and they assured me that they just want to ensure that the clasp stays secure to your wrist. Now I do want to mention that there are uh, screw pins holding each individual link in place. Now the diameter of these slot screws is actually smaller than I would typically find on other watches. So you just want to use caution if you're going to try and unthread the slot screw to remove or add additional links because there's the potential to strip them if you're not careful. And here's a quick wrist shot for you, just to show you how this 41 millimeter Archimedes Outdoor watch wears on my seven and a half inch wrist. And I would suggest that it does wear true to that 41 millimeter size because you do have a lot of dial real estate. And I should mention, if this watch does seem a little bit large to you, you can also purchase a 39 millimeter version of this timepiece. And they actually offer the 39 millimeter variant in multiple color options, which is also nice if you enjoy different varieties in the color of your watch. Now, long-term wearing of this watch is very comfortable given the case design. The weight is 167 grams when you combine the watch head with all of the links of this supplied hardened steel bracelet. But if you do want to trim down some of the weight, this watch also wears extremely well on multiple strap options. Now, in terms of personal preference, I would really enjoy it if Archimedes had a day-day complication for this particular model. I do find a lot of German watch manufacturers when designing field watches do have that day-day complication. Although if I'm being honest, if Archimedes actually went through with that, this would look strikingly similar to a Tutama M2 coastline. Although that being said, the Tutama coastline does cost twice the price for this timepiece. So it might not be a bad marketing strategy. Now in terms of pricing, Full list for this watch is 1100 euros on the Archimedes website, but they do use value added tax to that price. So if you're like me and you purchase this watch outside of Germany, you can deduct the VAT and that really runs you $924 for this hardened steel case as well as a steel bracelet. Now I do believe that there is a value add of about 70 or $80 to harden the bracelet. 
so it matches the same Vickers hardness as the case itself. But at the end of the day, I do think it is worth full list price. I mean, if you consider the fact that not only are you getting a hardened case that's anti-magnetic to a thousand gauss, you also have a, a watch that's mainly manufactured in Germany, nice thermally blued hands, great loom and legibility, and is extremely comfortable to wear. But as always, I would also love to hear your guys' feedback in the comments section of this video. What are your thoughts on the Archimedes Outdoors? I do want to thank Archimedes for lending in this watch for the video. And as always, I can't wait to catch you guys in the next one.